So today we'll be talking a little bit more about pricing. Uh, and this is one big beast that you actually don't want to open the door and enter unprepared. And one of the things I tell people is the importance of asking as many questions as possible. When it comes to asking questions before you give a price quote, in my opinion, there is no stupid question. In fact, I've asked a couple ones that called me up to cover their wedding. I asked them, how did you guys meet each other? And it was an awkward question because it was met with silence. And then they changed the topic and I asked the question again, only to find out that they met each other in a funny scenario that will give me an idea whether or not I really want to cover these people. So ask as many questions as you can. Where is the event going to happen? Uh, how many hours is it? Because the wedding that is happening in Lagos will take you not as much time as one that is happening in Meduguri. Sometimes a, a guest will call me or a client will call me and say, how much do you cover a day's wedding? I've covered a day's wedding that was just two hours event coverage. And then another day's wedding, I started 6 a.m. and ended 12 midnight. That is 18 freaking hours. Really, that's a long time. You need to also ask the event, the center, the exact place you're using because this room that I'm in right now could, of course, host a guest of about 10, 20 people. Covering an event with 20 guests present is a different ball game when you're covering an event with 2,000 people. And when we say 2,000 people, you all should know that that's the average number of guests that shows up in a Nigerian wedding. So basically you are asking as much questions, there is no stupid question. And then the next thing, especially if you know you were called on the phone, most of the time I highly recommend you get their email. If the inquiry is not coming via email, get the email and communicate whatever quote you are giving via mail. In fact, I would rather you, know, you have a pen and you are jotting down the important points that you are mentioning and by the time you are writing them an email explaining everything that you've said or that they've said, you have a better idea in written form. I'm a fan of putting things down in writing. So make sure you communicate whatever you know, price or whatever details you are trying to let the client know. Put it in writing. I'm assuming you should have an email except you were born yesterday. Even if you were born yesterday, you should still have an email. What other things should you consider before you price? It's important to also note what we call in accounting, the cost of production or cost of goods sold. Come to think of it, although I hate accounting, I realize it's coming in handy, you know, this photography business that I've been doing. So you need to find out what do they want? Do they want a photo book? Do they just want a soft copy and the average client says, just give me on the CD, you know, putting it on a CD doesn't imply that it will be cheaper than doing an album. So it's important to find out the final product that you are delivering. It's really, really key because if they want a photo book, for example, you need to find out how much does it cost to do a photo book. Find out the cost elements of each item in whatever they are requesting for or Find out the cost element of each item that will go into making that photography successful, creating a wow factor. And this is the final recommendation I give people when it comes to the final price they should give a client. Now, if the whole cost of production comes to about $100, I recommend using a multiplication factor, that is if you are just starting out, a multiplication factor of between three and seven of your cost of goods sold. So that means if the cost of production is coming to 50,000 Naira, if you are good, if you are confident that the pictures you're taking will be, wow, I don't think you should charge anything less than 150,000 Naira, really. So if it's costing you 50,000 and you're charging 100,000 Naira, it's actually statistically proven that you are bound to run out of business faster than you can pronounce the street that I grew up in, Olashon Gojimi. And one of the things I even forgot to ask, I usually recommend you actually get a deposit or what some of us call a retainership. If they are not going to drop money before that day, why should you show up if it's an event? 
heck, the, event, the, the cake decorator, the event, uh, Ketra, the food, everyone else got their money before. Why, why, why are you being so generous? That is if it's a business, if it's a hobby, heck, do everything for free. But as a business, you need to take things seriously. And then the final step is to use the multiplication factor of between three and seven, whichever one you feel comfortable with. So that's that for today on uh, GOP. I'm Shane Wakisomi. Remember, if you have any questions, realize that we are not you know, addressing every single issue when it comes to pricing. Pricing is huge. Just hook me up on Twitter, send me an email, subscribe to my channel, please, I'm pleading with you. Drop your comments. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. See ya.